Adult versus Child Bilingualism and Introduction Now in the coming modules, we are going to compare child bilingualism with adult bilingualism and see how it is different or similar. In an indirect way, this also seems to address the question that at what stage should children be exposed to another language and are adult uh, bilinguals more proficient than child bilinguals or uh, if child bilinguals have more advantage over adult bilinguals. So when we come to child bilingualism, um, we can say with some evidence that it is very well understood. There is a lot of re stock of um, different researches on child bilingualism. It has been studied intensively and my bilingual children have been compared with monolingual children and now only recently they have all also been compared with adult bilingualism. Now adult bilingualism would mean that even when you are beyond the age of puberty you are able to learn a language in addition to the languages that you know. So when we talk about bilingualism, we also include within this concept uh, trilingualism that is learning of a third language. So the whole point is that are the learners as proficient in learning another additional language or can they pick up the language or the third language with that efficiency of a child or not. Now, adult bilingualism is increasingly again encouraged in the world. You have this Erasmus programs by reputable universities coming together, offering a master's degree or a PhD degree um, in which the students are actually required to stay in different countries in, w during the completion of their degree. The point of this program, in, uh, uh, began, which began in 1987, was to encourage the learners to learn the language of the country in which they were residing. So the expectation from those students was that while they shifted their um, their place of residence or their affiliation with one, one university in a specific country, they also uh, learn the language of the other uh, country in which they move. So this is all to encourage bilingualism. So the point was, for instance, in this program is that the more the languages you understand, the more you will participate in different types of contests, the more enabled you become to have those kind of communication skills, to engage with different people. So it's all a step towards preparing your learners towards globalization. So even though we might say that English is the, the lingua franca right now, but is gradually being um, competed against by Chinese, by, uh, by uh, 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 Arabic, and, uh, and even if these become the lingua franca, again, there, are, um, uh, say there is a significant amount of population which will never have access to these languages. And in order to reach out to them, we need to know other languages. And interestingly, this program has been very successful and adult learners who had no prior knowledge of those languages have been able to have the kind of proficiency that has enabled them to finish a, an academic degree. So the topics that we are going to co cover in the coming modules are related to adult bilingualism, Child bilingualism, a little bit more in there, the differences between them, what does the research say and what are our assumptions that are generally uh, believed to be true and what are the similarities between them.